Hi everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And this is week three mm -hmm. of Sounding the Shallows. Mm -hmm. And did you notice how beautifully I said that? <laughs> and the reason is, the last two weeks I was having trouble saying Sounding the Shallows because of all the S's. <laughs> they were banking up on each other. Just one too many, I think. One too many, <laughs> but I think I've cracked it now. Well, this morning has been very significant for us and maybe just for some people who were with us in the boat for weeks and weeks. I because think it'll they be, knew the significance of something we're going to talk about. I think it'll be very significant for a lot of people because we moaned on and on and on about having to do a Monet jigsaw, which was really, really was incredibly difficult. And one of the things that really got to us in the end was we finished the thing and there were three pieces missing and that was terrible okay right now cut to this morning <laughs> when our dishwasher stops working mm -hmm. so we pull it out mm -hmm. and we've no idea what's gone wrong Bridget looks online and finds there's a code yes. appearing on the front of it which says that you have to and this is always horrifying isn't it take all the stuff out tilt it back collect the water in towels and on trays and then it will probably start again well when we did that out the back came quite a lot of water but also one <laughs> jigsaw piece from the Monet jigsaw Hi. and um, it's uh, it was it was a strange moment because we'd kind of disengaged from all that but there it was and uh, and also um, a positive point too is that when we put it back turn it on again it worked. It did. And we put all the stuff back and it was so all right. So maybe we need to rewrite the parable about the woman and her lost coin yes. and turn it into jigsaw pieces. I don't know. And and yeah. we are wondering what other miracles the other two jigsaw pieces might manage to... It wasn't to. quite a miracle, but it, it would be nice <laughs> to have. It felt like it yeah. at the time. Yeah. You know, I was lying in bed just thinking about us talking to you this Friday and I was thinking what for me is the word that sums up this week because hasn't it been an odd week and the word that came to my mind was cacophony it, it's interesting about noise at the moment um there are some things people say that you kind of dismiss and then you think about it and a few people seriously a few people have talked about how much noise the birds are making yeah and we're used to birds of course but it's it's almost as though they're shouting they're shouting at us. Yes. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure they're not. But maybe that. Maybe there is some reason for that. I don't know. Um, but as soon as we heard the word shouting, we thought of that Lewis quote. And I don't know if everybody would go with this, but there's a quote from the Problem of Pain where he says this. He says, "Whispers God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks to us in our consciences." But he shouts to us in our pains. And Lewis says it's sort of his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Now, later on, I don't know if Lewis would have continued to own that mm. thought. Mm. But it's interesting mm. to mm. consider. It's interesting well, to consider. Well, certainly whether God was shouting, a lot of people felt they could hear him because all the other noise had subsided. And that, I suppose, is how I felt about this week. Everywhere they're shouting. Now, some of it obviously is, is well worth shouting about. Um, black lives matter, all lives matter. Some of it we might or might not agree with, with people crashing around, knocking statues down. And that's another part of this shouting suddenly coming into our world. But there's other stuff as well, isn't there? I mean, there's the big thing about football starting and there's also non-essential shopping that's that is right. shouting quite loudly at yeah, us. We would, someone told us about a very funny cartoon they saw uh, where someone is about to go out the door and turns to whoever else is in the house and says is there anything else we don't need and that's how it feels <laughs> at the moment it's a it's 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 really strange to be doing the things we used to do naturally mm, mm. and it still doesn't feel natural it still feels pretty odd and there's a lot of tension around i think, I think there is a cacophonous um a cacophonous tension in 
us as we try to recover from this. Mm. Is it an anxiety, would you say? Or a... uh, it, I'm not sure. I think it's it's probably summed up. There's, there's a, a line in one of the Gospels which has a particular meaning, which we, we'll, we'll go on to slightly in a moment. Mm. But uh, it's when everybody leaves Jesus except the disciples. And Peter, uh, Jesus says to them, well, are you going as well? And Peter says, well, in, in effect, who would we go to? To whom shall we go? Mm. And whatever that means in that context, I think some of the, the, the fear and the confusion at the moment is embodied in that question, mm. is who's in charge? Mm. Who do we go to? Mm. Who do we listen mm. to? Well, of course, he goes on to say, doesn't he, to Jesus, who, who do we go to? You've got the words of eternal life. And I think when everything had crashed, it was easy to think, actually, that's true. But of course, the great problem is that there's always people shouting away, saying, we've got the words of eternal life within the church. Come to us. We know how it should be done. Just mm. come to us. And that level of confusion was something that really made you sick at one point, wasn't it? Well, it it, it was very difficult because, I mean, I, it, it was partly me. I was... Uh, talking about 30 odd years ago and getting very confused about everything about faith but knowing that there was something somewhere that really meant something mm. and this is something I wrote then mm. we haven't really done it all that much for a long time mm. it's called hallelujah in the back of my mind I take my problems to the altar but my steps begin to falter and I feel as if I'm starting to fall. For it's hard to recollect the proper way to genuflect upon arrival in a Pentecostal hall. And I really want to share it, but I know they'll never wear it. And the question in my head is underlined. But just as I am saying who on earth invented praying, Alleluia in the back of my mind. There are some who have you kneeling. There are those who hit the ceiling. There are others who insist on a smell. There are some who keep their hats on and a very few are bats on having serpents in the service as well. There are those who call you sinner if you dare enjoy your dinner and Gomorrah's in a half a glass of wine. But just as I am sure, I can't survive it any more. Hallelujah in the back of my mind. There are many, many people who rely upon a steeple to remind them that they're aiming at God. While well, some discover Zion under corrugated iron, and they none of them believe that they're odd. Hmm, so I take it, and I shake it, and I really try to break it, and I think that I can leave it behind. But just as I've dismissed it, there's a sound. I can't resist it. Alleluia, in the back of my mind. There's a man who, when I'm sickly, says you very, very quickly should be starting to get better, not worse. And he tells me that he sees I'm needing longer on my knees and there will always be a relevant verse. But some say if you suffer, then your spirit will get tougher. So you better find a will and get it signed. But just as I'm refusing to go on, it's so confusing. Hallelujah. In the back of my mind. Well, they say, oh yes, you may do what you feel because it's real and everybody must be perfectly free. And I'm happy to advise you, not a soul will criticise you, just as long as you are copying me. Mm, for they know the congregation in their own denomination is the nearest thing to heaven you could find. But when I say... That's it. Oh Lord, I know I'm never going to fit. Alleluia, in, in the, the back, back of, of my mind. mind. And it's that little Alleluia in the back of one's mind that I think has kept loads of people safe, hasn't it? Oh, I've still got, I've still got it there. Incidentally, I just heard as we're doing this, the dishwasher in course of uh, washing our stuff, which is just a wonderful <laughs> sound. A, a I'm wonderful sure everybody miracle. who won't have heard that at all will be very <laughs> pleased to hear that you heard it. There is a danger there, isn't there? There really is a danger about this shouting thing. Mm. Because the people who've only got Alleluia in the back of their mind, the people who are hanging on by a thread, the people who think, I'm pretty sure that 
I'm hearing God, but it seems very different from everybody else. Hmm. It's dangerous for them, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a, a friend who's doing a sermon this Sunday coming, I think, about uncertainty. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, one of the, the features of the, uh, I think the people we get on really well is that there is an element of uncertainty in them. Mm. There's nothing wrong with being certain about things. But do you remember that um, children's program on television years ago? It was called Run Around. <coughs> Excuse me. Run Around. And the idea was um, a group of kids were asked a question and then they had to run to one of three places where three alternative answers were posted up. Yeah. And let's say um, half the group or two thirds of the group went to C. Yeah. Uh, the, a number of the rest would go with them because they looked as though they knew. They knew, yeah. And then when a, when a buzzer sounded or a horn sounded, you could move. And then perhaps a whole lobe would move to A and some would go with them and some would stand in the middle thinking, I, I thought I'd found the safe place and now they've moved. And that's that's the, the problem <laughs> that if you say to yourself i'm going to look for people who sound sure yes absolutely it's okay mm. but you just got to be careful mm. you're not playing run around mm. because mm. when that because you've when lost or, confidence yeah mm. if that falls apart you could fall yeah. apart easily. well there's lots of corners there's always been lots of corners confident corners haven't there where people are saying i've got the answer join me and again i mean it's just the same with this game if you're the only one in corner d you're going to think i must have got it wrong and it's certainly i mean i think it may still apply but not as much as it did but it was absolutely the case about healing wasn't it 30 years ago well it was in the in the 80s uh, certainly and with some reason there there were people like john wimber who were showing people that healing happens of course so, of course but um the, the, this piece i'm going to read you now is from the sacred diary i can't remember if we read it before no before we haven't it. we didn't oh good um and it's um i'm afraid it's true <laughs> so here we go to church dwight hackenbacker we only changed the names <laughs> dwight hackenbacker the californian spoke powerfully about word of knowledge he said it was a gift for today's church and we could all practice it right now if we really wanted there was a short silence then young vernon rawling stood up pointed dramatically at ephraim trench's youngest girl bessie and said you've got a pain in your lower abdomen bessie went pink and said she hadn't vernon said she had bessie said she hadn't vernon said she had and then Bessie said she hadn't, and she should know because it was her lower abdomen. Vernon said that he knew she had a pain in her lower abdomen, and perhaps she didn't have the faith to feel it. Our elder, Edwin, stepped in then, thank goodness. I think if I'd heard the words lower abdomen once more, I'd have gone bonkers. At coffee time, some people seemed a little confused. Deaf old Mrs. Thin asked Dwight if word of knowledge was made by the same people as Cluedo and Monopoly, because she might give it to her grandson for his birthday. <laughs> well, of course, that's an exaggeration. But the thing is, it was a particular type of confidence that made you feel second rate if you weren't healed. And that applies to so many other things, doesn't it? You become kind of second rate if you're standing on your own in your own little corner or you feel you are. But some people are asked to stand in their own little corner, aren't they? It's it's such a complicated th thing. This um, as soon as you say that, I think of the the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Um, that that very striking verse that says they were standing still, looking sad. And some people are definitely standing still, looking, feeling sad. Mm. Um, having felt they've lost the grip mm. on what they are, who they are. Mm. And someone said to me very recently, in fact, I think it was yesterday, that um, some of the people that she respected, had really respected, were now saying, I don't know what to do. I think what they really meant probably was, I don't know what to be. Um, because we, Because we, what they do normally has been taken away is yeah that what you it's mean? been taken away and 
I, I think one person, for instance, is, is a musician uh, who plays regularly in the mm. church group. So mm -hmm. uh, when when that very important thing in, in his life is taken away, mm. um, it's 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 fair enough. It's how you feel, but it's 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 really important to look at mm. what remains mm. and to not not be too mm. anxious to mm. join up with something that lets mm. you pop into a a safe area mm. again nothing wrong with being safe I, no, I no, no. To add, but i was but, thinking uh, what you said about the two disciples uh, that they were sad they were sad with reason and who turns up and walks along with them jesus does they didn't leave jerusalem triumphant they didn't leave jerusalem saying oh well that was a load of waste of time no, they, they were deeply sad and I think that's fine, isn't it? We have all been through an yeah. extraordinary experience. Now, you and I haven't lost anybody close to us through this. No, thank um, God, no. But many people have. Well, you and I have had each other. Many people have been on their own. We've had our own difficulties in some areas, and so of many other people. But it's all right. It's all right, isn't it, to be a bit confused and a bit sad at the well, moment? Well, I think you make a very good point, just before we finish, but that those two people for them there was nothing left no and they were going home to the only home they knew and that was when Jesus came mm. so for those who are Christians and I know many who listen are um, that mm. realization that if you tell the truth mm. if you face where you are yeah how you feel yeah be honest about it yeah and then look out for him mm. to mm. come mm. Uh, and, and, yeah. and and be be a little bit careful mm. but a little bit brave as well mm. when the time comes. well last week we were talking about catch the wave weren't we and so maybe i suppose if we're going back to boats for a bit we're talking about just paddling on the spot a little bit um taking a bit of time and asking god where is my wave which wave do you want me to catch it won't necessarily be the big one with loads of people all shrieking and being happy it but might. it might be i was just <laughs> going to say and that would be great it might be something completely new that you mm. haven't experienced before but i think we have to go back to that listening don't we yeah. back to at least a sense of quiet in the middle of the cacophony yeah. and saying I, I i really do need your megaphone yeah. i need you to shout in my yes. ear i need you to tell me what to do that's right which wave keep your ears open yeah and we'll see you next friday yeah bye bye bye